well students in the last class we have seen something about the significant figures and uh, how to round figure the digit to a particular significant figure okay so now we will see the dimensions of physical quantity so this is one of the wonderful topic that you need to keep like you need to study very well so that you can deal with most of the quantities or physical quantities and you can do many calculations using this even for your competitive exams also you can make use of the tricks what you learn here okay so dimensions of physical quantity so you can say that these are the powers or exponents to which the base quantities are raised to represent a quantity so see this they are powers or exponents to which the base quantities are raised why to represent a physical quantity okay now we will take an example about dimension of force so you people must have known from newton's second law the formula for force is known to be f is equal to m into a so we can write m mass into length divided by square of the time correct right acceleration you know acceleration is meter per second square so meter length divided by square of the time okay here you have minus sign because of the reason that time is there in the denominator okay now we will write the dimension form of this before that let me give you the some idea about what we have studied earlier or the beginning of this chapter basically there are three quantities right so basically there are three quantities mass length time okay how do we represent mass mass is represented by capital letter m in the dimensions length is represented by capital letter l with a square bracket see here also square bracket and time is represented by t capital letter t so we can see here we have mass i'll write m to the power 1 okay we have length the term is there in the num num uh, numerator that's the reason why i'll write l then in the denominator we have t square of that that's the reason why i'll write it as minus 2 i can write the equation in a simple manner m l t to the power minus 2 okay so this is a dimensional formula or dimensional equation what we get for the force now we have to check how many dimensions of mass see here one dimension of mass what about length length one dimension of length minus two dimension of time okay one dimension of mass one dimension of length and minus two dimension of time so this is nothing but dimensions of a physical quantity so if you want another example i'll give you one more mass density or we what we call it as density you know the formula rho is equal to m by v okay mass all right m okay what about v its volume volume you know right it is length into breadth into height or we can simply call it as meter cube so i'll write l to the power 3 now you just see this how many dimensions of mass dimension of mass is 1 what about length length is minus 3 time we don't have time at all over here right so dimension of time will be 0 okay just have an idea about this it is about dimensions of physical quantity okay and we will move on dimensional formula so what is this dimensional formula you have already seen here so it is an expression which shows how and which of the base quantities represent dimension of a particular physical quantity see expression which shows how and which of the base quantities represent dimensions of a physical quantity so which base quantities are representing the dimension okay this is known to be dimensional formula okay i'll give you some examples dimensional formula volume we have already seen meter cube i can write zero dimension of mass and three dimension of length then t t is zero so time no dimension of time then we can simply write it as l to the power three okay next one velocity you are familiar with the term right so velocity means meter per second so what about mass no mass okay length 
it is 1 what about time time is minus 1 so this is a dimensional formula what about acceleration acceleration so we can write this one like uh, l t to the power minus 1 okay then why because anything rise to the power 0 is 1 itself right okay acceleration 0 l t to the power minus 2 so we can write it as l t to the power minus 2 okay force we have the formula f is equal to m into a so what to do we know m okay then what about acceleration we already have it here right so you can just directly write it see simple force f is equal to m into a we know mass that is one one dimension acceleration we can write directly from this one okay what about energy we can make use of see i'll do the for the first equation you should check it for the second equation okay so what about energy energy is half you leave that constant okay it is m v square m to the power one then square of velocity we already have the term over here l square t to the power minus two see this is the dimensional formula of energy what about momentum momentum is nothing but m into v mass into velocity so how can we write that mass is m okay what about velocity it is l t to the power minus 1 okay so you can just carefully see this and try to understand it we will move on to the next one dimensional equation so it is the same thing just we have to represent a quantity okay along with the dimension so what does it say an equation obtained by equating a physical quantity with the, its dimensional formula see that's it an equation obtained by equating physical quantity with its dimensional formula so just we write volume that is v is equal to m l q t to the power 0 so m also 0 what about velocity small v that is equal to m to the power 0 l to the power 1 t to the power minus 1 force f is equal to m to the power 1 l to the power 1 t to the power minus 2 okay so this is about dimensional equation okay we will see dimensional analysis what is this method dimensional analysis means okay dimensional analyzing any quantity by the method of dimensions is called dimensional analysis see very simple right analyzing any equation by the method of dimensions okay by the method of dimensions is called dimensional analysis okay we will see the applications of this dimensional analysis that's what i told why this dimensional analysis is very important so if you like to continue your future like you, if you want to study with the physics you need to know all these things because when you calculate or when you deal with the equations you need to know so many things okay so one of the major application see this question will be asked for two marks like uh, write write any two applications of dimensional analysis maybe one mark or two mark so to check the correctness of the equation so using this dimensional method you can check whether whatever equation you have written is correct or not that means whatever equation see i can tell you an example for the same energy you should get the same dimensional formula for energy if you write with the half mv square or if you write with the mgh if you are not getting the same dimensional formula that means equation is wrong okay so how to check the correctness of the equation simply by doing dimensional analysis okay so to check the correctness of the equation one application next one to derive relation between various physical quantities so to de derive relation between various physical quantities so you know right many physical quantities are related see velocity is related to it is meter per second length and time see how to derive derive a relation between this uh, length and time with velocity so we have to go for dimensional analysis method okay 
to count to count unit of physical quantity sorry it is to convert to convert unit of a physical quantity from one system to another system so when you convert from one system to another system systems you have studied right cgs system mk system okay all those system so when you convert from one system to another system you need to get the help of the dimensional analysis so that you can get a correct conversion next one principle of homogeneity or consistency so this is one of the major thing what you need to know while solving equations so it says that all the terms on both the sides of the equation must have the same dimension so all the terms on both the sides of the equation must have same dimensions if the dimension dimensions are not same then you say that equation is wrong see i'll do for you here actually what i have told there to check the equation uh, using mgh and uh, half mv square so we will check it for energy if i say that half mv square is equal to mgh then i should get dimensions on both the side the same one okay so i'll write half mv square kg meter square second to the power minus 2 that is equal to here m kg g meter per second square you know it is acceleration due to gravity h is meter we will go for dimensional formula kg m meter square l square second t to the power minus 2 that is equal to m l square t to the power minus 2 see this m gets add, added with the this one meter meter so you are getting m l square t to the power minus 2 okay students we will see one more example to check the correctness of the equation we will take an equation which is very familiar to you it is the equation of motion that is v is equal to u plus at okay we will see the dimensions of velocity we have already discussed it it is m to the power 0 l to the power 1 t to the power minus 1 then u it is nothing but initial velocity it is also a term of velocity only so dimensional formula is c what about acceleration acceleration we have seen m to the power 0 l to the power 1 t to the power minus 2 okay then time we can directly write it is t okay now we need to prove that the terms on both the sides of the equation have got same dimensions okay all the terms should have same dimension then we say that equation is dimensionally perfect or the homogeneity of the equation will be satisfied okay we will check it v is equal to u plus a t this is the equation now dimension of v will be written we can neglect this m because m to the power 0 is 1 okay don't need to consider it l t to the power minus 1 that is equal to again same l t to the power minus 1 plus acceleration l t to the power minus 2 here it is minus 1 okay l t to the power minus 1 l t to the power minus 1 l t to the power minus 2 then t to t to the power 1 okay now what we need to do we have to write the terms like this only we will write so same term is written down l t to the power minus 1 that is equal to l t to the power minus 1 plus what happens over here you can see here in these two terms see this t to the power minus 2 t to the power 1 you know when you have add two terms with exponents the power or exponents will get added up then what happens minus 2 plus 1 you will get minus 1 so this term actually goes to this l t to the power minus 1 now you just see this all the terms in the equation has got same dimension then you say that this equation is a perfect equation okay it follows the homogeneity of the equation okay we will move on to another important thing it is a kind of derivation or equation should be derived using the dimensional technique these questions may be one of the question we will I'll be doing two questions so these questions are appeared in the previous years examination 
so you can just try to understand it properly and it is very easy to understand as well if you know the techniques what we have discussed earlier okay so the question period of oscillation of a simple pendulum depends on its length l mass of the bob m and acceleration due to gravity g so you have to derive an equation equation for its time period see you need to derive an equation for time period of this simple pendulum so if you people are not familiar with the simple pendulum i can tell you it's a simplest pendulum you can just tie a stone to a to a thread and you can just hold it see this is a simple pendulum okay so if you just oscillate it it will start oscillating so i'll give you a picture over here so this is a simple pendulum we will fix it to some point okay it has got length l and it has got mass m so it has got weight mg so weight is acting downward right so that's the reason why it is told the time period time period means what it is a time taken to complete one oscillation so pendulum goes up to here and it comes back so if it starts from here okay if it starts from here it goes up to here then it comes back again or coming back to the same point so time of revolution we say okay it's called time period now we will check an equation or we will try to get an equation for this time period it will depend on l m and g okay so we can write simply we can write t is proportional to l to the power a m to the power b g to the power c so this a b c are constants and we don't know the value of that we have to find it okay we will compare find it by using the dimensional technique so i can write this proportionality sign can be replaced by a equal and a constant so this k i have written k is a dimensionless constant okay now we can write the dimensional term so t can be written as m to the power 0 l to the power 0 t to the power 1 okay on the right side i have l so i'll write l to the power what to the power a next one m to the power b what about acceleration due to gravity we know that it is acceleration right so what we have to write l t to the power minus 2 to the power c see just make it clear okay now we can again write m to the power 0 l to the power 0 t to the power 1 if you don't want you don't need to write this term okay no problem if it is there it's okay i can write equal to l to the power a plus c just check where and we have l term we have an l term over here c one more l term over here to the power c so you know right what happens powers will get added up correct so i can write l a, a to the power a plus c then m to the power b t to the power minus 2 into c okay so after writing this what we are going to do is we will equate lhs and rhs or we will compare the terms in the lhs with the terms in the rhs now what you are going to get just listen carefully here m okay so we can write the terms here m what is the term for m it is b right so what is here it is zero so let me write b is equal to zero comparing what about l l is a plus c what about lhs it is zero so i can write a plus c is equal to zero see comparing the powers okay be careful comparing the powers a plus c is equal to zero now you tell me what is c then so minus 2 into c is equal to 1 see minus 2 into c is equal to 1 so i can write minus 2 into c is equal to 1 what about c c is equal to minus half okay so it will be minus half now i don't know the value of a from this one right so i have to calculate a how to calculate a so i'll take this equation a plus c is equal to 0 what about c c is minus half so i can write a minus half that is equal to 0 a is equal to half 
see I have all the values we have B we have C and we have E now substituting A B C in equation 1 we have to substitute in equation 1 now what do you get T is equal to K into L to the power half see L to the power A right L to the power half M to the power 0 because B is 0 what about G G to the power C that is minus half now you know what is uh, to the power half means it will come under square root so we can write t is equal to k into square root of l divided by g and this k can be written as 2 pi it's a constant okay so you will get an equation for time period t is equal to 2 pi into square root of l by g so you have to do a practical using this equation okay and you will be learning this in the oscillation chapter as well we have one more okay it is about the centripetal force so you can calculate uh, you can try to get an equation for the centripetal force it is said centripetal force acting on a particle moving uniformly in a circle depends upon its mass velocity and radius of the circle so let me assume a particle is moving in a circular path so on what all factors does the particle depends it depends on mass of the particle okay then velocity of the particle then the radius of the circular path okay so we need to uh, derive a relation for this one okay so what to do derive an expression for centripetal force using the method of dimensions we will do the same so just listen properly try to understand and try to solve by yourself just taking this equation don't copy it from the board just try to do it so we know f is directly proportional to m to the power a v to the power b r to the power c we will just write it okay then we will move on to the next step by equating to a constant so f is equal to k into m to the power a v to the power b r to the power c okay we got equation one now dimensional formula we have to substitute over here m uh, for the formula for force you already know m l t to the power minus 2 okay m l t to the power minus 2 here m we will write velocity l t to the power minus 1 to the power b over here to the power a over here r you know it is radius measured in terms of meter so length l to the power c okay now same thing whatever we have done in the previous uh, problem we will do here also we have got term for length there are two terms so we will add the powers l to the power b plus c m to the power a t to the power minus b okay now compare those two uh, equations on both the sides so we can compare for the powers on both the sides and we can write see here m to the power 1 okay so a will be equal to 1 l to the power 1 b plus c is equal to 1 see there then t to the power minus 2 therefore minus b is equal to minus 2 so what will be b b is equal to 2 see here a is equal to 1 b is equal to 2 now what do you need to find you don't have c right so what to do we have the equation b plus c is equal to 1 so substitute the value of b over there so what do you get 2 plus c is equal to 1 and uh, take the term to the other side so 1 minus 2 it will be minus 1 so c is equal to minus 1 okay now we will substitute all the constant terms in equation 1 see here f is equal to k into m to the power a that will be m to the power 1 then v to the power b that will be v to the power 2 then r to the power c that will be minus 1 now equation can be rearranged f is equal to k into m v square divided by r for k is equal to 1 we can write the equation for centripetal force m v square by r okay so this is the equation for centripetal force so there are some numericals left we will do it in the ne uh, next coming class okay